Hi DIYers, Sterling here from Alarm Grid, and today we're going to show you how to learn in a 5808W3 wireless smoke and heat detector. This is a very nice device because it allows you to get some more extra value out of your monitoring uh, contract. Instead of just protecting your house from burglary, we can now protect from uh, fire emergency. So it is a smoke detector. It is also a fixed heat detector so uh, even without smoke if the temperature inside the room uh, goes above 135 it'll also sound an alarm. Uh, most homes uh, if they're built to code uh, in their recent homes are going to have uh, life safety smoke detectors that are tied into the house power. Um, those are the ones you got to worry about you know they always chirp you got to change the batteries so these would be in addition to those. Those are great if they go off uh, because there's a fire when people are home uh, they're going to make the loud noise. All of them will go off at the same time. Everyone gets out of the house and uh, there's no life safety emergency. The reason that a 5808W3 is good is if a fire happens to break out uh, when you are not home, then instead of just a loud noise happening, house burns down, we actually get the signal at our central station and we're able to send the, the fire trucks out and potentially save your property. So, uh, very nice device to add to a wireless Lynx Touch security system. So, we're going to show you how to learn this in. First thing you got to do, there's uh, two parts to this device. There is a base. Turn it counterclockwise. Remove the head from the base. You'll notice it comes with a battery. Uh, the battery has a tab, so it's not live. First thing you're going to want to do is remove that tab. And uh, our device is now active, um, ready to be learned in. So. Go ahead and uh, close the back up, and we're going to program it. What we're going to need is our installer code to get into programming. Our installer code is a four-digit code. Uh, by default, it's 4112. If you've changed it, obviously use the one you've changed it to. To get into programming mode, you click More. Or I'm sorry, from the home screen, you click More, Tools, and then 4112. We are now into the programming screen. To get into actual zone programming, we click Program, and then Zones. We already have some doors and motions learned in our system, so we're going to scroll down, get to our first available new zone, and toggle the zone, click Edit, and we are on the screen to program our wireless smoke detector. So, with every wireless Honeywell device, you can auto-enroll the serial number, or you can actually physically type it in. With most devices like the doors, uh, door sensors, and motion detectors, the auto-enroll mode uh, makes it a little bit easier. With the, with the smoke detector, because of the nature of how you activate it in the auto-enroll mode, uh, it's a little bit easier just to type it in, and I'll show you why. So the first thing you want to do is click on serial number. We're on the screen where you have your touch, uh, touchpad, uh, keypad, and you would just enter your serial number. To get the serial number for your smoke detector, you pop the base off, uh, or the head from the base. There is a barcode um, with your serial number. So it shows as A for alpha, and then your seven digit code. So it looks a little different than other devices. You normally have your A, alpha, three numbers, dash four numbers. This just shows it as the straight seven digit string. So again, to auto enroll mode, you would actually have to Twist the head from the cover one time. Oh, that didn't go, so we'll do it again. Two times. You can see the serial number and the loop. It's not taking. We'll do it one more time or a third time. This is highlighting why the auto enroll mode on the smoke detector is not the best way. Okay, finally took. So it took more than the typical three activations, first of all. And more importantly than that, and why we don't recommend enrolling it that way, is because we're activating by actually tripping the tamper, removing the head from the base, it enrolls with the loop number four, which is actually the zone that protects the tamper on this sensor. So instead of the loop number one, which it should use, it auto enrolls as four, which is not what you want. So you'd actually have to know that and you'd have to change the loop number, toggle it to one, and then save. So for that reason, we always recommend to just go ahead and click in the serial number. We'll clear this out as if it's brand new. And we're going to just go ahead and pop the cover and we're just going to type in our serial number to make sure we get the right loop number.
073-1297, click done, keeps it default loop number one, we're good to go. As with all sensors, we have a zone descriptor one and a zone descriptor two, so you can name the device if you're going to have multiple smokes throughout your house. You're going to want to know when one goes off which one was it, or maybe if there's a low battery signal and you want to get to that one and change the battery, you want to know where it is. So we always like to name it, click into zone descriptor one, you have your keypad here. You can't just start typing your word, let's say you want to name it Mary's bedroom, you can't just start typing Mary's bedroom. You have to choose from the available library. So uh, this is actually going to go in our living room. We're going to click L for living. Laundry. You'll see it shows laundry, so it goes to the first L word at the top of the alphabet. You can use the down uh, arrows Laundry room. to scroll through the available words. A quick shortcut is to just choose the second letter of living, Library. I, and it skips over to the LI words. If you uh, shortcut again by hitting V, living. goes down to the LIV words. And the last thing is just one more down arrow. Living room. You can actually put living room as one zone descriptor one. That leaves you room to put a second descriptor in case you had two in the living room. You could say living room east and west or living room left and right. For us, we only have one. We're going to keep it living room. Uh, next step in device type, we're going to choose smoke detector because that's what it is. By choosing smoke detector, we have limited the available response types to the two Honeywell zone, type, uh, zone response types that you would use for this sensor. So fire no verification or fire with verification. For this sensor, we want no verification. There is no verification with the Lynx Touch, so go ahead and choose that, which is actually the default option. Um, last thing, you want to make sure it says alarm report yes. Uh, chime should be no, there's no chime on this device, and it should be supervised, which means that the Lynx Touch will periodically check in with the device to make sure it's being seen and that it's not out outside of range. If you ever have an RF supervision error, that means that the, the Link Touch is not seeing the device and you'll have to either add a 5800RP repeater uh, or you'll have to move your panel or move your smoke detector so they are seeing each other. You typically get about 200 foot range from the panel with this sensor. So now that we have all this in, click save. You can see that uh, living room smoke detector has now been programmed as zone number 12 and we can go ahead and back out of programming. On this screen that shows installer code and system programming in yellow at the top, when we back out, it's going to allow, ask us if we want to allow re-entry into programming mode. Very important that we say yes here, otherwise you won't be able to get back in here without using the backdoor programming method. Click on yes. We're back to this screen. One more back out to the home screen. And we're now ready to install our 5808 W3 wireless smoke detector. If you have any questions on how to program yours in, please give us a call or email us at support at alarmgrid.com.